Hello Blender heads! This is Richard from Animate.com. I'm presenting you the Parallax Shader Pack for Blender. It's a shader pack using Cycles nodes to generate and render an incredible amount of detail with no use of memory. Parallax mapping is a technique to fake detail depth into a low polygon surface. Think of it as the bigger brother of bump maps and normal maps, as higher parts of the texture will cover lower parts completely and therefore make the impression of real depth. Sounds promising, but there are limitations, you'll see. Nevertheless, let's have a look at some examples in this pack. First I want to show you a scene with an imperialistic house, which is common for European architecture. With all those detailed ornaments, it would take a huge amount of polygons to model it. On the other hand, Normal maps couldn't do the job properly as windows will still look to be on the same level as the front wall. If you look parallel to the wall, you shouldn't see windows at all. Parallax map truly hides the windows by displacing them in a way that the front wall covers everything properly without the use of additional polygons. For a street scene, this is a time saver not to mention the amount of geometry it saves. We'll have a look into the setup later on, so let's look at the next sample. A stone surface, where, again, the stones cover each other, highly depending on the viewing angle, making the impression of a detailed surface that you don't want to walk bare feet. And as you can imagine, another use is in mechanical textures. The right surface has a parallax shader applied, the left doesn't giving the flat surface a complex depth controlled by the texture and nothing else. Think of spaceships and skyscrapers in that case. Another example goes into landscaping, where this technique is used to simulate grass with a huge amount of grass blades. This scene would be impossible to model with a particle system, as the amount of grass blades exceeds any memory given. This shader is useful for fur or crowds of people as well. Last but not least, have a look at some low poly trees with lots of leaves in a volumetric density. Again, it's just some layers of parallax shading, creating the impression of depth in the treetops. So you see, there is some situations where this technique can be applied. What lies beneath? How is it done? Luckily, the Cycles renderer is one of the most open render systems as it comes to nodes and vector math. Almost any of the geometrical properties in the render process are available handy in the node editor, including the much underestimated tangent input node. While this one is often just used to shade some brushed metal, it actually is one heck of a tool in differential geometry. It translates the UV map vectors from the two-dimensional surface into a 3D vector in world coordinates. Therefore, lets you know exactly in which direction in space your U-vector is facing. This opens up a world of possibilities, one of which is parallax shading. The rest is a lot of vector math to make the distortions look accurate. And there we are, displacement within the shading based on a height map, just like bump height maps. As we are engraving depth into the surface, I call this channel depth map instead of height map. So basically, how do you use one of these parallax shaders? The general shader uses texture maps and therefore needs a diffuse texture as well as a depth texture. The best way to define the textures is with the texture panel, because here you won't have to click through the whole node setup to change the textures. Simply choose the diffuse or depth texture from the drop-down list and load your texture into the channel. Next, you want to choose your parameters. The basic property is the height. Think of it in percent of your texture. Usually you want just a few percent of depth, according to the width of your texture image. I used to end up with the values between 0.1 and 5 here. So it's almost like the strength value of a bump normal. Then you choose the direction of your depth. Right, your depth doesn't have to go only into the surface. It could also grow along the surface, like for combed fur, for example. For this, you can use a normal factor and an offset factor in space. Here you can again use the tangent node as input if you want to use a UV map. 
that should be a comb direction for your fur. So normal factor lets your displacement stand up and offset will bend it in a given direction. What follows is a value for bump map based on the depth map which comes to the normal output of the node and a value for ambient occlusion darkening the surface in depth areas. The grass fur and crowd shader. This shader is useful for any mass of similar thin objects scattered dense over a surface. This includes fur, grass, crowds, forests and so on. Instead of particle-based solutions, using a shader solution saves a huge amount of memory and therefore enables you to simulate vast grass areas with astronomical amounts of grass, meaning billions of billions of grass blades. Basically, it's a combination of 10 layers of Oronoir textures. So it's a little more processing and will take more time to render compared to the simple parallax map shader that uses five layers with distortion. On the other hand, it's more precise and therefore leads to cleaner results. Again, you have the ability to choose a height or depth of the parallax effect. The direction of the depth is controlled by the normal factor as well as the offset. Especially for grass and fur, you will like to use a noise pattern as input for the offset to make it look more irregular. Think of wind blowing over a meadow. The wind will bend the grass. You can animate the offset texture along the surface to make the impression of wind, therefore. You see the purpose to use an offset. So I hope you see the use of this pack and that you hit me with lots of your feedback. If you have any questions, feel free to email me and meanwhile, keep blending. Bye.